Hello world, I'm Nick Proud and today we're going to look at SQL injection and I'm actually going to perform a SQL injection attack on myself. So before we start, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you find this interesting and if you want some more .NET goodness. You can also find my blog posts at automationmission.com which I'll link in the description below and you can find me on Instagram as code commit repeat. But let's get into SQL injection. So SQL injection is exploitation of a vulnerability in code. The vulnerability is where the inputs going to the server for a SQL server, for example, are not checked and the parameters that are being passed to things like SQL queries or stored procedures are not compartmentalized into their own parameters. Usually they're part of a concatenated string. So if you take, for example, a classic SQL query like select star from products, where product ID equals one. If you build that query up based on things that people have sent in using concatenation, so you say where product ID equals plus and then the product ID that somebody sent in through a web form or something similar, then you've got yourself the potential of a SQL injection attack. The reason being that somebody could actually type in some explicit SQL that will then get appended to the end of that actual SQL query. And it will then start to allow them to execute code maliciously on your SQL server. And that's quite a lot to take in. So I'm gonna show you an example on my own SQL server. One of the examples will be where I've not sanitized my inputs. This is a term you'll hear quite a lot in the security world. And I've allowed someone to essentially append their own SQL code to values they're sending through to my server, which will then execute server-side and start deleting things. After that, I'll show you a way that I can safeguard against that with a safe version of the same operation. So here I've got my prototype DB. This is just a test DB that I play with. Uh, and I've got a table called test table. This test table contains uh, some dummy products, basically. So you can see here I've got uh, three products red notepad, blue notepad, and a pack of 10 BIC ballpoint pens. They each have an ID and they each have a name. For this example, I'm gonna use a C-sharp console application to call a delete query. The proper use of this delete command would be to say, I want to delete a product with the ID X. So I'm gonna show that in the unsafe way, so unsafe for SQL injection, and then I'll show it in the safe way that does safeguard against that SQL injection attack. So let's take, for example, the blue notepad. If we wanted to use our console app to delete this blue notepad product in this table, we would pass it two because the ID for that product is two. Okay, so here's my console application. And from the entry point, I've instantiated a new class which contains my logic. And I've called it SQL injection example. So I'll show you that actual class. So here in the class, we've got two methods. The first one we're going to call here is delete product by ID. So we're going to call this from the main method on the console app. We're going to pass in that product ID of two, and then it's going to run the delete logic using the SQL connection uh, in C sharp, and it's going to delete that specific product. Now you can see here, this is an example of what I was talking about in terms of that unsafe concatenation that's used for the SQL query. So here we've got the command text as a string set to our SQL qu uh, command, which is delete from test table where ID equals, and then we're appending the passed in product ID as a string. Then we use a SQL connection instance, passing in a connection string to my local DB just zoom that in a little bit. So we then open the SQL connection uh, and then we use an instance of a SQL command to execute that command text which uses the concatenated string concatenating the ID we passed in and the connection that we've just opened. Then we execute a non-query. If you're not familiar with non-query, essentially in SQL it means execute a command that doesn't return anything. In this case, a delete command. Then we close the connection. Now, to the untrained eye, this may look fine, but actually we're opening ourselves up for a whole world of hurt because somebody could pass in more than the product ID. They could also pass in a semicolon, which would end the current statement, and then start their own whole set of code, which could then start maliciously dropping tables, deleting items, running stored procedures, anything that you could do in your SQL environment it could then do as part of that submission. 
So I'm gonna show you an example of this. First, we're going to call our delete product by ID command. So I'm gonna say injection example. So this is the instance of our class, which contains the method. And I'm gonna call delete product by ID. And we need to pass in a string of product ID, which would be two. Now on its own, this is fine, but actually I'm gonna close this off with a semicolon and then I'm gonna start typing in my own SQL that I want to execute on the SQL server maliciously. So I'm gonna type in delete from test table and this on its own would simply delete all the items in the table, which is not great because the command is designed to simply delete one item. Actually, it's gonna delete all of them. So I'm gonna run this and then see the console that runs there we go it's finished and if we go over to my sql database and i refresh this select query you can see all my data is gone and this is where everyone starts to panic so let's go over again what just happened we called a sql command via c sharp that deletes a product by a specific id the c sharp code builds a command using a concatenated string no, no, no. This allows malicious actors to send in more data or more text than, was, than what was expected as part of the parameter. So as well as product ID, I've also closed off this command from the client side and then added in my own SQL command, which deleted everything. So I'm just gonna go through the painstaking process of rebuilding my data. Obviously it would be pretty much impossible to do this manually on a production database because you would have potentially thousands, if not millions of records. So I'm just gonna put in red notebook as ID one, ID two is the blue notebook, and then ID three, I think was a pack of ballpoint pens. Doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same, I just wanna get some data back in there. So refresh this and we've got some data back in. So now I'm going to call the method which um, uses the safer method that protects against SQL injection using something called SQL parameterization. So here's my safely delete product by ID method. It accepts the same parameter of product ID, which is a string. Uh, and then it does something slightly different in that it doesn't actually build the command using string concatenation. This is the key difference. Instead, it replaces what would be the product ID with a SQL parameter. So you can see here, we've got a SQL parameter which starts with an at symbol, and this means in SQL that we're using a parameter or a variable. So here the command is self-contained, we can't add anything to it, and the value here will be compartmentalized into a SQL parameter. So whatever we pass in, we'll be replacing this essentially on the SQL side. We've added a parameter using C Sharp's SQL parameter class. So we've instantiated a new instance of SQL parameter, just FYI, that's part of system.data.sql client, as is the SQL connection and SQL command. We've then started our command in pretty much the same way, saying we want to execute a new SQL command with the command text using a parameter and the connection. And then the command has a property called parameters, which is a collection. So we can add our parameter to it. We're saying we're adding a parameter for product ID, which matches up to this, and the value is what we've passed in. Then we'll execute the non-query using that parameter rather than the concatenated value on the command. Back on the console, I'll get rid of the command we just called. And you can see here, I've got a commented out version of the safe call to delete product by ID. So I'm gonna call that method and I'm still going to try to delete everything in the table. So let's see what happens. So we're running the console app, and you can see here, it's actually thrown an exception because it can't process this parameter. So it's received a parameter of two, semicolon, and then a command, but it actually can't convert that to the data type that's required. Now bear in mind, you shouldn't rely simply on the parameterization in SQL to safeguard against SQL injection. You should also check these parameters to make sure that they are what you're expecting. And you should be looking for individual script keywords. It's very similar to what we do with injection in web development, where we look for people trying to insert JavaScript through forms. We usually look for the things like the script tag, for example. So it's very similar in that regard with SQL. So let's try this as a non-malicious actor. So let's just add in the number for the ID. 
run the console app again. And what we should see here is that the item we're expecting to be deleted has been deleted and that item alone. So I'm going to refresh the query and you can see that product has been deleted as expected. So let's try the same safe version using parameterization, but this, this time instead of deleting by ID, delete by name. So we can make sure that sending through a string with some other SQL won't work as well. So I'm gonna create a new public method called safely delete product by name. And this will accept a product name. I'm gonna copy this and then I'm going to alter it for our purposes. So I'm going to create a parameter called product name, and then the value of that will be what we've passed in. We're going to change the command text to delete from test table where name is equal to the product name that we've just created as a parameter. And there you go. There's our safely delete product by name method. So I'm going to go into the main method of the console app. I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to say, injection example dot safely delete product by name and this time I'm going to say I would normally be deleting the red notebook but actually I'm going to then try to append some malicious code So let's see if we can hack our own database again. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint here and then we're gonna step into that code. So we'll run the console app. I'm gonna step into this method. We're creating our parameter, creating the command, starting our SQL connection, adding the parameter, executing the query. And we've not had an exception because there hasn't been a data type conversion issue because the string is, a string is expected and we passed in a string. If we look at the database, refresh the query, and you can see our data is intact. Because as far as the SQL code was concerned, we were asking it to delete a product called delete from test table, rather than adding that to the command itself as literal SQL. So let's just double check that if we were acting without malicious intent that this worked. So I'm gonna get rid of the nasty code and we're just gonna use it properly and say, delete the product called Red Notebook. So I'm just gonna step over that one and then check the database. And there you go, we've safely removed the Red Notebook. Now it's really important to point out that this is not a panacea, meaning that this is not the exclusive way to safeguard against SQL injection, but it is the bare minimum that you should be doing if you're concatenating strings to make SQL commands in C Sharp, it's a big, big no-no. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe to the channel. It's a massive help. And if you want to get some more .NET content outside of YouTube, head over to automationmission.com and take a look at my blog where I talk about .NET and robotic process automation, as well as software development careers and how to progress yours. Leave a comment below if there are some specific topics you want me to cover. And until next time, keep coding.